Before you start collecting your core, you're going to want to make sure that you have the correct marks on your drive rods so that you know where you'll stop lowering the coring device and begin taking your core. The end of the drive rod can be dipped into lake safe antifreeze prior to the core collection so that you can be sure they will not freeze onto the coring device and be difficult to get apart. While you are lowering the coring device, it is a good idea to keep light tension on the cable so that the coring device can't slide down the square rod while you are lowering it. As you're lowering, be sure to hold the cable next to the drive rods. While you put the rods on, it's a good idea to count them so that you know how far down in the hole you are and which rod you've just put on. Rod one. Rod one. You'll want at least three people working. One will be lowering the rods and the coring device into the hole. One to be managing the cable. Note that Mark is showing the proper cable unspooling technique. And another to be attaching the drive rods. When it comes time to push into the sediment, depending on how stiff the material is, it can be useful to have additional people. Rod three. Rod three. Once you get your stop mark lined up with the top of the casing, or the item being used as your datum. Then you release the cable from the drive rods and pass it through the climbing figure eight and attach the figure eight to the carabiner anchored into the ice with an ice screw. The cable can be pulled taut by pulling it back towards the hole with the cables parallel to one another. Once you have all of the slack out of the cable, you can wrap the cable around the figure eight and pass the loop through the center of the hole to provide tension on the cable. You'll want to make sure that the cable is staying in a fixed position while you're unlocking the square rod and driving into the sediment, so there's no ability for the piston to move along with the coring device while you're taking the core. Once the cable is fixed in position, you can add an additional rod if needed to give you enough rod out of the hole for driving into the sediment. You will then lift the square rod out of the coring device one meter by pulling up on the rod. You can give it a little wiggle if needed. Once you hear the clunk at the top, you'll give the rods a quarter turn clockwise and then allow the rod to slide back into the coring head about 10 centimeters to lock the square rod in place for driving into the sediment. Note that since you just lifted the square rod up one meter, the mark on the rods that was your start mark has now moved up one meter and will now be your stop mark for the core drive. Once the rod is locked in place, you can drive the core into the sediment. Make sure the person holding the cable in place is ready before pushing. You'll want to have people evenly distributed around the outside of the core. It is best to count off to start and have everyone push evenly in one smooth motion. Remember that your start mark has moved up one meter and is now going to be your stop mark. If you are unable to push the courier to your stop mark, you'll want to make sure that you measure that. If you get stopped before driving the full one meter, you can add a drive rod handle or pipe wrenches on the drive rods to give yourself more leverage to drive into the sediment. If you have two pipe wrenches, you'll want to make sure that they are opposite of one another so that when you're pushing, you keep the rods as straight as possible going into the sediment. The wrenches do not need to be tight onto the drive rods. Once they're attached and you push down on them, they'll bite into the rods to give you the leverage to push. It can be a good idea to keep the lowermost wrench near your mark so that you can't overdrive into the sediment. Once you've completed the drive, the cable should be released from the climbing figure eight. At this point, the rods are stuck in the sediment and the cable can be slack, so you have a bit of time when you can relax prior to pulling the core up. Once the cable is free, you will lift up on the drive rods only, without the cable, to pull the square rod back out the extra 10 centimeters 
that the rods had dropped down when you locked the rod in place. Once you've lifted the rod up that 10 centimeters by themselves, then you'll want to make sure that you securely hold the cable next to the rods while you pull everything up. When pulling the rods and cart, remember to use proper lifting techniques, using your legs to lift rather than your back. If additional leverage is needed to pull the core up, you can attach the pipe wrenches to help pull the device out of the sediment. If you're using the pipe wrenches, be sure that you're putting them low on the rods and make sure that you're holding the cable in addition to just pulling the rods. The pipe wrenches are most useful at the start of core retrieval when you need to break the friction. Once you've pulled the rods up a little bit, it's usually easy enough to raise them by hand. Just like you did when you lowered the cord down, it's helpful to count the rods on their way back up so that you can be sure that you know where you are in the water column. It is possible for the cord to get stuck on the casing as you're pulling it up. If it does that, you just give the rods a quarter turn clockwise and try lifting again. Remember only to rotate clockwise so that you do not unthread the core or the rods. Note that the drive rods will fill with water as you're coring, so be mindful of this as you're unthreading your rods as to not drench any of the other people working with you. Once you can see the top of the square rod, then you know you're about at the core. With the Livingston, when it comes out of the sediment, you'll tip it so that it's horizontal as soon as it gets to the top. If there is additional mud on the square rod or on the core barrel, now is a good time to wipe it off. You can use a bucket to get some water out of the second coring hole to rinse it off. Before you extrude the core, you'll need to unlock the coring device. To do this, make sure the square rod is pulled all the way out and then give it a quarter turn back counterclockwise and slide the flanges back into the notches in the coring head. You will slide the square rod in until it hits the top of the piston. When you slide it back in, you may note that the mud or water comes out of the holes in the sides of the coring device. It's a good idea to drain all of the water out of the holes at the top of the steel barrel prior to extruding the core out of the tube. When you're holding the core barrel horizontally, it can be a little bit tricky to get the square rod to slide into place. Make sure that the rod is lifted so that everything is properly aligned. Using a clean rag, you can wipe off the outside of the core barrel so you don't get any extra mud or water into the secondary liner that you're going to extrude the core into. You'll also want to make sure that the square rod is ice-free so that the coring head can slide freely up the square rod. The Livingston extruder should be affixed to the ice using an ice screw. This will keep it from moving around while you're extruding the core. It is best if you have a tarp or another surface you can work on for extruding the cores so you don't get ice or other contaminants into the core while you're extruding. Once the extruder is fixed in place, set the core down in front of the extruder. You will put the drive rod connector into the hole in the front of the extruder and using the free spool on the extruding winch, you'll pull out some additional strapping. Once the strap is long enough, wrap around the Livingston head with the hook so that you can then pull the coring tube back. You'll flip the switches on the extruding winch to activate the winch. Please see our video on setting up the Livingston extruder for these details. Crank the extruder handle to pull the coring device back towards the extruder. This will pull the core barrel back, exposing the sediment you just collected. You'll want to make sure that you have a piece of ABS lined with plastic wrap at the end of the coring tube. This will catch the extruded core as the extruder is pulling the core barrel back. The piston is staying in place while the core barrel moves, and that is what is pushing the sediment back out of the core tube. You'll want to make sure that you're keeping the core tube aligned and that someone is holding the top of the core liner so that it can't slide up as the barrel is moving towards the extruder. Once the barrel has reached the top of the coring device and you can see the piston nose out of the bottom of the barrel, use a hacksaw or utility knife 
to cut the sediment free from the piston and then lift the coring device away from the sediment or slide the ABS tube with the sediment away from the coring device. If your plastic wrap has torn during the process, you'll want to make sure that you replace that so you have a layer of plastic wrap that does not have any holes in it sealing your core up. This can be done by leaving the old plastic wrap on the piece of ABS on the bottom and placing a new layer of plastic wrap on the top of the core and then putting the other half of the ABS clamshell on top of it. The wind can make this a little bit tricky. You'll want to make sure that you have a little bit of extra plastic wrap at each end of the core so that you can seal it up nicely. You can use a utility knife to cut the plastic wrap free. Once you have the new plastic wrap in place, you can flip the ABS tube over and remove the other half of the clamshell as well as the torn plastic wrap. And at this point, you can wrap your new plastic wrap around the core in both directions to make sure that you have a nice seal, rotating it back and forth between the two halves of the ABS tube as many times as possible to get a nice wrap of the plastic wrap around the core. Wrap the plastic wrap all the way around the core, folding the ends in, flipping it back and forth until you're done. Once you have the plastic wrap completely wrapped around the core, you'll want to check the alignment and make sure that the top of the sediment aligns with the top of the ABS tube. For the final placement, be extra sure about the placement of the ABS. We'll put a cap on the top of the tube to keep it in place. A cap will be placed on the bottom of the tube as well. If the sediment does not fill your liner completely, we'll cut a small piece of foam to fill the gap at the bottom. You don't need to have a piece of foam that's long enough to fill the entire gap if you have a bigger gap at the bottom of the core. You can just cut a piece that's a couple centimeters and tape it into place using electrical tape. By securing the bottom of the core with foam and putting a cap on the top and bottom of the tube, we can make sure that the core won't slide back and forth in the liner. Once the foam is taped in place, place the top piece of the ABS over the core, making sure that you have matched ends together. In case the ABS has been split unevenly, it is best to use a matched pair and make sure that you have it aligned in the same direction it was split. We'll put a blue cap on the top of the tube, blue for the sky, and a red cap on the bottom of the tube. These get taped on with electrical tape in a similar way as we do with the polycarb caps, making sure that you get a wrap between the cap and the ABS tube and adding enough to go over the lip at the end so that the cap cannot come off. Once you have the end caps taped in place, the next step is to label the core. Because the ABS tube is black, we have a white paint pen that we use to label the core tube. The ABS tubes do not already have an arrow indicating the up direction. So the first thing you'll want to do is put an arrow on the core tube pointing to the top. Then we will label them with the expedition code, in this case FILM, film, the site, and the hole. This is 1A, the drive and the coring tool code, so for the Livingston, that's an L, and the last number is the section. Up arrows again, and we make sure that we label both sides of the tube so that we have a label on each side of the core later when it gets split in half in the lab. It's good practice to add an extra piece of electrical tape around the middle of the core tube so that it cannot get sheared and squish your sediment. To clean the Livingston corer out between drives, use a vice grip to pull the piston out of the bottom of the core tube. You'll then have one person holding the Livingston coring device and another person holding the cable as a backup. You will dip the coring device and the piston into the lake water to rinse it out. To do this, you can hold onto the square rod so the barrel is fully extended and you'll plunge up and down. Note that the coring device will shoot water out of the holes at the top of the barrel when you do this, so make sure not to get all of your gear wet. 
Once you feel as though you have the corer fully rinsed, pull it back out of the water, feed the square rod back into the core barrel, and replace the piston at the bottom. Once you have done the math for your next drive and marked your drive rods, you are ready to collect your next Livingston core.